I'm Twenty J here on Side, the notorious psychedelic band from LA, Levitation. How are you guys doing? Good, good. I didn't know we were notorious. <laughs> so you guys have been a band for around seven years now. You started in 2012. Mm -hmm. Can you guys describe how you first came together? Well, like shortly after high school, getting out of like the high school band stuff, uh, I ran into Julian. And he was already in the real world and all that. And we had been in high school bands before, you know, I just ran into him. I wasn't playing music anymore, or not in the band at least, and he was just saying how he wants to start a band and kind of saying the type of music he liked. And it was kind of like where I was going towards an influence as well. Yeah, we had, we had been in a band before together called Pits. It was like a 70s, like 77 punk rock style, like beat pops, New York Dolls kind of thing. But then I kind of like, I felt like I grew the band because I was getting more to like, Psychedelic music in the garage and things and stuff like that. And then we met John. We met Julian at a party. And that's a whole other story in itself. Yeah, we met because he was playing harmonica. I had carry a harmonica with me everywhere at the time. But I've been playing, I've been playing harmonica. That was like the first instrument I learned, so I was. Uh, I asked him if I could see the harmonica. And I just wailed on it. <laughs> and he was like, hey man. I heard you're, you're starting the band, and I was like, yeah, we're, we're actually we're looking for a singer. And he was like, oh, I can sing. And I was like, oh, cool, well, maybe you can try it out. I was like, we're actually, we're also looking for a drummer. And he was like, oh, I can play drums, I can do that. I just wanted to be a part of something. Yeah. He showed up with like this little kid's drum set. <laughs> that was my neighbor's sister's drum kit at the time. <laughs> but, you know, we're just like, let's just go give it a try, jam it out, and just like feeling you know, just being in the room with the guy, it was a great spirit, and then just the rhythm that he brought was just like, okay, you know, with the real drum set, we got some potential here, you know. And then after that, we spent like another like year or so, maybe a little bit less, just as a three-piece, working on instrumentals, and still figuring out our direction, and then we found our bass player, our original bass player, um, via a Craigslist. <laughs> we were that desperate for a bass player, and this guy came through, with a big old bag and a great <laughs> bag of skills. <laughs> and, you know, the rest was just taking it from there, you know. Well, his pad was Jonathan Martin, which is my name. Oh, that's right. We and thought it was like, him inquiring from for another band. We're like, hey, are you trying to play bass in another band or what? <laughs> it was a different guy. Yeah. And we've been through one other bass player since then, but now we have a friend, Brandon, who, who just, we just joined the band and played his first show with us last night. There's also a band called Dream Phase, so that's good. Yeah, really good. So it was a long process from us getting together again, rekindling our friendship and just like sharing influences to like finding a rhythm section and just really figuring each other out rhythmically and just spot vibe wise and then getting a bass player and then really crafting songs. So like the whole process of creating a levitation of set took like three years. Yeah, so it was a long process. Yeah. What does your concept of levitation mean to you all? Uh, that's a hard one to say, man. It's, it's open to, to interpretation. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the idea, I mean, what, how we created things and just existed was just like a collective of all of us just putting in our two cents and just really like honing in on that, you know, never really just a, an isolated idea from one person. It's always like a group effort because, like, you know, a team of people is better than one person sometimes. Yeah. So that's always been, like, the, 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 ethos, the ethos of the band, you know? Like, we work as a crew, we are a gang, you know? And um, just have a good time with it. Too. There's also other meanings to Levitation Room, of course, but, you know, what makes it work for us is that we work, work together. It's a collective, right? It's a collective, yeah. Um, starting out in 2012 in that kind of garage, you know, psych scene, um, you know, coming you know, seven years later, how have you seen that scene change and progress? I can't tell you what direction it is. It's kind of weird. I feel like, you know, like the louder sound is kind of happening, but then also this like chill, vibey kind of thing is happening. Yeah. yeah. You know? We've seen a lot of bands drop out, but we've seen a lot of our like bands that we started off playing with, like the Buttertones. Yeah, we started they, at the same time. Yeah, you know, we started around the same time and they've blown up and done good for themselves. But a lot of friends bands do that, so it's good to see that happen. When I talked to Glenn of the Trip Tides, he was kinda of saying that there is a pocket of psychedelia in 
in San Luis Obispo as well as LA and abroad. So like when you go on tour, you just go to these different psych scenes. What are the ones like abroad compared to the LA psych scene? Um, well, I mean, like, in L.A. there was a really tight-knit group of, of musicians all hanging out, and there still is, but in, in, um, in Europe it seems like that's kind of more dispersed, you know? it's, it's not really, like, there's not that many communities of, like, psych and stuff. But, but just the fans of appreciators of just independent music, you know, so, like, like, for in Europe, it's not necessarily a psych scene. It's just a scene of you know youths that are just into like it's a rock and roll, rock and roll music, music so. which is cool because they don't not themselves. Yeah, yeah we're, we're not going just for a niche thing, yeah. and, and we kind of like that too because sometimes I feel like yeah, we don't want to be pushing. Yeah, especially with our new album and the songs that we will be playing soon, they're not like as like straightforward gun ho garage rock songs or psych like songs. They're a little bit more. Textural dynamic. What are some of your favorite musicians you've come across while touring and playing festivals? First one that comes to mind was this guy's in Germany, our friends now. This guy, um, Flo. <laughs> What's yeah. his name? They're called the. They're called the. Uh, Fuchsnam. Uh, which means like folks and like nihilist put together. <laughs> it doesn't really make any sense, but it's like. Yeah, it's, it's a really good band. They sound like a, a Crosby Still Snatch. Kind of like Three Peaks band. They're awesome. Um, there's a lot of bands. Yeah. Cool Gold in San Francisco. Cool Gold in And we've ran into them a few times on tour. Yeah. Like in, in Europe, so it's cool to see them still at it. Um, obviously, Trip Tides, like the Witch Fingers. They kind of came from different hubs, and now they're in Los Angeles. But I'm pretty sure if they would have stayed. Of Indiana and all that, we would have ran into some either way. You know, yeah. The universe would have brought us together. Yeah. So, yeah, it's kind of good. So, how do you guys progress in your recording process? You guys started off in a lot of fun and transition over here. You can actually do really some stuff with me. Yeah, well, I mean, we were never really, really said anything with Lollipop. We were just always kind of associated with them. And then uh, we kind of just made recordings on our own on the computer, just demos and stuff. And then uh, Glenn came along from Trip Tides. We met him and he's a recording whiz, so he started helping us. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so we just work with him now. Okay. Yeah. Do you guys prefer digital recording to analog recording? No, we prefer analog to digital. Okay. Yeah. Why is that? Uh, just, just, it's just a warmer sound, just more, uh, just more genuine, I guess. It just sounds good. You know? I don't know, like digital, I can always tell when something's difficult. It just sounds too clean. Is there a different kind of essence in the studio in terms of uh, the analog? Um, I mean, I would say, yeah, it's more hands-on since, like, we do it ourselves. We're mainly Glenn's, like, the man in charge, right. the captain of the ship. We get to see him, you know, rewind the tapes, fit on the tapes, clean the tapes, you yeah. know, so there's more, like, love into it, we, and then we see the effort. So it's just more of an organic feeling. Yeah. You feel it when you're recording, when you hear back the tracks. You're setting it up, you yeah. the time to like get it rolling, so like when you're about to play the music, you really appreciate the whole time it took, so it's like, let's give it our best effort. Yeah. Right. Change our songs. So imagine capturing it live too, all together. Yeah, exactly yeah. that too, rather than like just the computer, so we can each do it on our own and track it and polish it up as much as possible. Sound like robots. <laughs> <laughs> do you guys keep that same? Um, we we're making videos for our songs. We've always let the people who are making it so far um, kind of interpret what they see for the video. And you know, obviously we have a conversation about it and usually it's something that we're on board with, you know, like a lot of colors, a lot of abstraction. Um, but we are working on more videos soon. They're kind of probably gonna be a little bit more like tied to the song content. Romantic song, romantic video kind of idea. We were really kind of straightforward. Yeah, our, it's kind of funny. Our videos have been more of an abstract representation of the music rather than some kind of like band performance or a storyline. So we will want to try more focused things like that in our music videos. Sometimes, you know, Julian, you know, 
face is time to the time to the lyrics to really put thought into it. Maybe you can project that in the visuals with the video as well. Kind of that. And you guys have we got some, some good stuff coming out, yeah. We, our next album dropping is dropping on Green Bay Records in June. So we're, uh, we're leaving the year up midway through June. And uh, we also have some other shows and stuff on the West Coast in Virginia and East Coast. Stuff like that coming up like, prior to the part. Yes, a single, and we, we do have a, a batch of new songs that we can start recording them right away. So, so we have a new album, a new single, and then in between all that, we're gonna try to record a whole new another album already. So we're just trying to get the, the mojo flowing still. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, especially yeah. since talking about recording, we, since we've done it from our, on our own, not knowing what we're doing with somebody like Glenn helping us and really just like pushing us to like to do it so the more we've done it I think the more we've gotten comfortable doing it so now that like we feel comfortable we can explore songwriting ideas or sounds or you know styles so I, I think that's what's cool about it you know it's more exciting